Why are we giving them the power? Why is that what we talk about at the water cooler? Why is that the first thing you bring up when you go have dinner? There's Boy Scouts, there's Girl Scouts, there's senior citizens. There's enough good going on in this community that we could fill volumes. There's 990,000 of us that are making stories every day, that are paying our mortgages, that are paying our water bills. We're sending our kids to school, and we're taking care of our pieces of property here in the city of Flint. Let's credit them. Let's applaud them. Let's get out of, of, of being so negative in this city. It just, it's ungodly, it's unbelievable that as many churches as we got in this city, <laughs> and as many people claim to be God's brother, that we have this kind of problems. It's amazing. Now, I said that to say this, <laughs> believe it or not. We're getting ready for this year's Juneteenth celebration. Not Juneteenth, but the Kwanzaa celebration. We're going to be hosting it over at Mirren Hall. And we're always looking for organizations, individuals, and groups to sponsor or host an evening. If it's something that sits on your heart, if it's something that you feel is beneficial to folks that look like me, and folks that look like you, and folks that don't look like either of us, Amen. we need you to support it. It's a chance to bring people together. I've always condoned any excuse to bring a group of folks together to talk about positive things. Amen. You know, it's, it's a time to reflect and rejoice. We want to reflect about where we've been, but we want to rejoice about where we're going. So I'm always looking for support. That said, I've got another issue. These city council meetings are only broadcast on Channel 17. They're only on Channel 17, and that means only Comcast subscribers get to see this. Wow. So and in wrapping up, yep. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to generate some funds. I'm trying to generate some money so that I can put these council meetings on late night TV on the networks. So the people who don't have Comcast can see it. The people who have uh, the ANTTs and the DISH network can participate in city government by being able to view these meetings in their homes. Amen. If you guys are interested in helping me do that, please feel free to give me a call at 259-9789 and let's make things better. Remember, in all things purely social, we can be as separate as the fingers, but we need to be one like the hand in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Thank you, Paul. Okay, there's Mr. President, I'm sorry. I, 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 yeah, I'll make this fairly quickly. I would like to send a referral down to uh, Darner Early, the emergency manager, uh, to ask them to reinstate the contract and or compensation for Mr. Heron uh, to make sure these broadcasts continue because this is a vital instrument to get to the people who cannot make it out to the council meetings to actually see city government at work. Uh, so I would like that referral to be sent. Thank you. Support that. Yeah, I'll recognize that referral and you know, for members of the public, council members, when the Channel 17 was taken away, we coalesced and collected money so that we could pay Mr. Herring so that he could do these, these um, few uh, broadcasts because we felt that it was very important for the community. So um, I, I will personally, uh, Councilman Nolan and I will personally talk to um, Mr. Early about continuing these programs because I, I do believe it's important for the community. Mr. Mr. President, when Mr. Heron spoke, he mentioned Ms. Donna Poplar, and so that was the last speaker, correct? That, um, Mr. Herring is the last that speaker. That was the last speaker, so I want to take this time to piggyback on what him and Ms. Poplar said. I asked Ms. Poplar to write down and send me up some of the things that she said as an action step as it relates to the journal because remember Miss Poplar didn't have to say it. I was appalled when I seen and nobody else might have been appalled but I was appalled when I seen a mixed councilwoman Poplar and councilwoman Galloway with the story with Mr. Davis and I, that was just me. And so then I got a call from Marjorie Raymer 
and she apologized this morning. And I wanted to know exactly what do you interpret that you're apologizing for. And she kind of indicated in her private conversation, and I said to her um, that God is good. And I said to her and recommended that she read Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth and sixth verse. But nonetheless, something or somebody made them call and apologize. And I like Dominique, and I told Dominique the Lord moved in mysterious ways that I'm glad that that stuff didn't hit three days earlier because it could have affected the outcome. Even though it's been documented, I'm still saying I got two felonies. It still ain't tight yet, but they'll get to it. And then I'll tell you what happened in each one of them. And I'm, I'm cool with it because, see, I will show you in one that sometime you can be a convicted felon, but you don't really, ain't really wrong. And then I'll show you when the gun charges, the law changed, where right now in 2012, it wouldn't affect me because in 87, you couldn't get a permit to carry. But when you try to kill me, I'm going to carry. And if you threaten me nine, I ain't supposed to have a gun, I'm going to still have one because I'm a felon. It's just some stuff that I know to survive. And you'll see that I prosecuted the people who was threatening me in a jury trial and me and my brother convicted them and they kept coming. But my point is this, I've got to take action and uh, we've got the right to inquire. And the public got the right to know. So Ms. Poplar, I thank you on point. This is what my brain says. Um. Will Marjorie, excuse me, will Marjorie Raymer come before us? I would like a communication sent to see if Marjorie Raymer and or anybody from the journal want to speak to us in a public setting. That will be one request and one referral. I would also say that if they don't want to come to us, that we would like a written apology because I got one on the phone for whatever it was for. I would also say that um, at this point, once they give us a written, this is the third thing, and I might have jumbled them up together, but give us, if they choose, they don't have to, a written explanation of what their intent was, or what they was thinking, or, you know, what is they apologizing for if they didn't do wrong? Now, after we get that done, I want to say to the public that I suggested something once I seen that about the Grand Blank Council. And some people tell me that it's on the, you know, it's on there now where when you go to M Live, you can read a story that's similar to the Grand Blank ones about us being a historic black council and that the women and made history. So I think it's on there. Is there something on there now like that, Dominique? You nodding your head in the affirmative. And I think that's a great type of story. That's the story that I think should have came out first. I think the women should have been separated. And I'm, you know I'm a person of first, second, and third chances. So, Ms. Poplar, I'm going to keep these action steps, and we're going to take it in an escalating fashion and see if they will come forward, because it's not just a private apology or explanation to us. It was a public story. So, <laughs> let's see if we can gradually get some action and communication, and if we can't, then we're going to exercise some additional steps because first, let's see who's willing to communicate publicly rather than all these little private apologies and stuff. So if it's understood that referral is so made 
and you give it to me a week or two or three or so, and I'll talk to you if you choose to talk to me. But it's a lot of people, including the NAACP, who made calls, and I heard you on the radio, and I hear you now. And if we are people of second and third chances, then let's see if we can work together. Let's see what they do, and let's see if we can move this community journalistically forward and make our image look like what it should be. Thank you, Eric. What, um, what I think I'm hearing you, and correct me if I'm wrong, you'd like to send a letter to Marjorie, the publisher and the editor, and ask them to come to a council meeting and um, ask them in the letter to report to us what their intent was for the uh, article and the timing of the article and what precipitated it at that time. I, I kind of That's what I think I'm hearing you say. Yeah, if they choose to. And then also I want to ask them in the letter if they will tell me what they was apologizing for. Not necessarily me, but I got a call about an apology, and I've never had a newspaper apologize to me in my life. So that confirms that something in their journalistic ram they see they done wrong, and I'm not sure what it is, and I don't want to put words in their mouth. Well, but, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So, so I did, I can swear to God, I got a call for some type of an apology, and I want that cleared up in the letter. But if they choose not to put that in the letter, however they choose to do it, I just want some communications to see if we can get some movement, not privately, but publicly, because it was a public article and it affected the images of us, more so Miss Galloway and Miss Poplar, then, and if I'm okay to say it, then me and Ms. Mr. Davis, yes, I just think it was a separate. So I just want to see if we can start some movement publicly with those people in okay. front of this council and in front of the public. And I think if it happens, it'll be good for everybody. But let's see if it'll happen. And however you word that, I know you're more confused than if I had kept my mouth shut. But you are the president. Those are the communications, and if you want me to review it once it's wrote, or if it's satisfactory to Ms. Poplar, Ms. Galloway, or even Ms. Donna Poplar, I'm sure we can get it together. Well, well Mr. Mays, I, I, I just want to communicate this to you and my other colleagues, that any communications that are sent out by me as a request by a council person. It's never sent before that council person reviews it and then okays it, okay? Just so that you know. I mean, I don't put a letter together and send it and give you a copy of it. I, I work with the clerk and the staff to put a letter together as a draft, give that to the person or persons that are requesting this, and then ask them if they want to make any changes or whatever, and then we put it in a final form and then send it. Ms. Donna Poplar, is that okay for a start? You can nod your head, or whatever. May I, please? Yes. Yeah. 